Hello, I'm Mike Montague, and this is Who Moves You, the podcast about real estate and the real estate market in Ontario, with an added focus on regions north of the greater Toronto area. Anyone who has seen a news report in the last six months knows full well it's a seller's market out there. Most homes are receiving multiple offers and going for over list price. So if homes are selling like hotcakes, why would anyone bother to go out of their way in preparing their home for sale if it's a guaranteed sell anyways? That is often the mindset of sellers and even some realtors in the type of market that we are seeing in 2021. Most homes will sell and yes, they will sell quickly and many of those sales are likely to see multiple bids and go for a price well beyond what they listed for but some still risk leaving money on the table if they don't do those same things in preparing to list that they would otherwise feel obligated to do when the market conditions are reversed, where there is high inventory of listings to compete with and buyers have the upper hand. Even in a seller's market, there is a difference between an acceptable dollar and top dollar, and every seller and every realtor worthy of their title should want to aim for top dollar. So what are the things you can do that will mean the difference between two or three offers on your home or 10 to 20 offers on your home when you list? Some of these are standard tried and tested things you already know to do or you should be doing, but they are worth going over nonetheless, along with some added bits of wisdom that are specific to the type of market we have here in 2021. To begin with, a good cleaning and decluttering before you the sign goes onto the lawn is always an essential in setting the right tone with potential buyers who will be scrutinizing all aspects of your home when they visit. This alone, though, won't likely be enough to give you maximum dollar potential in your house sale. What then are the magic bullets that will bring the buyers to the table and keep them determined when the competition starts pushing up the bidding price? Cleaning, painting, purging, and sticking a bouquet of flowers on the dining room table are all good practices, but many buyers, or most buyers, are concerned with the bones of the house, not just the skin. You want them to be focused on how their furnishings will fit in and how they will decorate as they walk through your home, not distracted by an adding up list of repair and replacement requirements along with the additional cash that they're going to have to spend on mechanical or structural upgrades and improvements. To top the list of things that often cause home buyers to lose interest or to back away from a multiple offer situation, number one on that list is often windows. Replacing windows that are more than 20 years old, especially wood frame windows that have deteriorated. This will eliminate one of the bigger red flags buyers often raise. A compromise is to replace any panes that are broken or fogged because the seals are broken. A scraper, some caulking, wood filler, and a fresh coat of paint can give wood frame windows extended life. At the very least, clean your windows. Dirty paint marked windows only leave buyers wondering what else is being ignored. Roofs and eaves troughs. Buyers don't want to be put out, be putting out thousands of dollars for a new roof as soon after they buy their new home. If the condition of your roof is detracting from the appeal of your house, chances are you're going to pay for it regardless, as it is likely to impact on the quality of the offers you receive. Your home's roof is one of the first things buyers notice when they pull up, and it can set the tone for the rest of the showing. The majority of potential buyers will move on to the next home on their search list when a roof is in need of replacing. Additionally, it is a good idea to repair or replace damaged or loose flashing, fascia, and eaves troughs and ensure that they are clean and doing the job protecting the interior of the house from the elements and diverting water away from the home. Banisters and deck rails. Aside from potential safety issues, loose railings or banisters inside of a house or outside of the house can give many the impression of an uncared for home. Around a third of inspection reports that I see list wobbly railings and banisters as an issue. It doesn't take much to fix them and it isn't worth the risk of having them impact on what buyers will be willing to pay. Basements. I have had many good showings fall apart when we start down those stairs into the basement and there's that unmistakable musty and damp smell and feel. Often you don't see the source of the moisture, which then leads to mold concerns with potential buyers. Moisture meters and infrared cameras that many of the better home inspectors use can usually pinpoint the source of moisture or water penetration into a home's foundation. It is best to have the source identified and the problem corrected before you ever list. 
Often the remedy is a reworking of sunken ground around the home's parameter so that water is directed away from rather than toward the, the, the foundation of the house. Repositioning or extending of downspouts may be all that's required. If left unchecked over time, you may find yourself faced with a much more expensive task of having to trench the exterior of a foundation and install a membrane or having to reparge the concrete foundation. Many basements are just damp by nature. In this case, running dehumidifiers will eliminate much of the dampness and odor. If odor persists, you should be able to eliminate these odors completely by running an ozone generator for a day or two. This is a service that many companies offer. Flooring, a generation that represents more than half of all buyers today, puts carpeting in the same category as 8-track stereo players and wood paneling. New flooring can refashion your home from looking like the Brady Bunch house into a more stylish and up-to-date living environment that first-time buyers can envision themselves occupying. New hardwood or engineered flooring can be installed inside of a day or two in most average size homes and there are always sales to be found on flooring materials. Spend the extra dollar for quality if you can. There is more and more good quality engineered product that is comparable to real hardwood yet more affordable. There is also a lot of tempting entry price product I would recommend that you stay away from. The skimping on floor finishings is only going to cheapen the look and feel of your home. Lighting. Replace the dim and burned out bulbs and brighten up your home with new energy efficient lighting fixtures that create a contemporary appeal. Dimly lit homes and original builders grade fixtures don't inspire buyers. It might cost you a couple hundred extra dollars to replace standard lighting wall switches with cutting edge smart switches, but the investment will definitely impress your buyer's prospects when they tour your home. Think hard on replacing or repairing where it's required. Once we have lived in a home for a number of years, there is a tendency to see only the things we need to see day in, day out. What lies between the bedroom and the bathroom and the coffee pot in the kitchen goes unnoticed at 7 a.m. and many of the things that may have slowly deteriorated or become outdated over time seem to get filtered out. Most of us will spend more on new decor and furnishings in the first year of owning a new home than in any other year. If you are in a position financially, create some leverage by replacing those tired furnishings and decor now but while you're still in your old house Buying and staging these items in your current home before you list rather than waiting until after you move is going to give some extra appeal to the home you're selling. Bring in some fresh eyes before you list. Get the advice and opinion of friends that you trust to be straight up with you. Bring in a realtor, a home stager, a decorator, inspector. Ask them for their critiques. Make a list of the fixes and suggestions and set to work on making your home more saleable or else be prepared to be presented with a list of fixes revealed in the buyer's home inspection report and expect to be having to pay to compensate for those defaults in the home or fix them yourself before closing. Get them done before you even list. You will be able to absorb many if not all of the improvement costs within the price that you can then ask and the final price you may receive for your home. The difference in the quality of offers you receive and the return you will get from your home by investing in its saleability will be worth more to you in our current market than it would be in any other market. I invite you to give me a call to help you get started. I'm never too busy for your business or for your referrals. Call or text me at 705-718-6119 or you can email me at mike at gimmeshelter.ca and click on the subscribe link to listen to past and future shows. I'm Mike Montague with Remax Crosstown Realty. Who moves you?